Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today, our message is entitled, Striving for Holiness. Turn with me, please, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 8. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now, what I want us to do is to take a special look at verse 7. Let us read that verse 7. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about holiness, striving for holiness. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, we are to strive for holiness because God said he did not call us for impurity, but he called us in holiness. So serving the Lord, not in lukewarmness, but in righteousness and in the beauty of holiness. As we just read, Paul is reminding the Thessalonians of the way that they should live. He had already given them the instructions and he had warned them solemnly to stay away from sexual immorality honor their bodies, avoid the passion of lust, live in the peace with their fellow brothers. That's what we ought to do. We have to strive to live in peace. That is, live in peace with your neighbors, live in peace with your co-workers, live in peace with your church brethren, and, and things, people like this. We're to live in peace. We're to stay away from impurity, and we're to cleave to holiness. These Thessalonians, they had already heard all of this. They were already practicing all of this. But Paul, under in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, thought it beneficial and expedient to remind them again to keep on doing what they were doing and even more so. Why even more so? Because the days are evil and it's easy to get swept up in sin's sway. It's easy to get carried along with the tide. It's easy to get caught up in this political correctness if you do not make a stand. Therefore, I want to remind you, dear listeners, that you ought to keep on doing what you're doing. If you are indeed doing these things that Paul had just pointed out, that, that we're to stay away from all of that stuff. And even if you are doing it, I want to remind you, just like how Paul reminded the Thessalonians, I want to say, keep on doing what you're doing. And even more so as you see that day approaching. But what day? The day when the Lord Jesus himself comes back to get us. We got to be ready for that day. And make no mistake, dear brothers and sisters, that day is nigh upon us. That day is close at hand. That day is getting ready to happen any day now. I'm not saying tomorrow. I'm not saying next week. But I'm telling you, it is close at hand, even knocking at the door. And we have to be ready for that day. Therefore, we don't go around 
lusting. We don't go around living in sexual immorality, but rather we steer clear of depravity. The world that we live in is a corrupt and dishonest world. And it's really easy to get contaminated by the corruption of a crooked generation, a crooked and corrupt generation. So we do not participate in their depravities. We do not take part in the shedding of innocent blood, but rather we honor God with our substance. We honor God with our bodies and we live in peace with everyone. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 states, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So again, this is suggesting that there is a certain standard for us Christians. There's a certain way that we should live. And there's a certain way that, or a certain standard that we should uphold and that we should keep. Not just on Sunday mornings, not just on Sunday evenings, but all week long. There are certain things that we no longer do, that we no longer participate in, such as coarse joking. We don't participate in that coarse joking at work. We don't cuss. We don't use foul language. We don't participate in slanderous talk. When people are talking around a water cooler, so to speak, we don't participate in that. We don't mumble against God by mumbling against our pastor and against our our, our leaders. We We don't talk behind our fellow church brothers and our fellow church sisters back and causing a division in the brethren. We don't cause division in the body of Christ. Christ is not divided. We are one in Christ. Therefore, we we stay away from that backbiting, that back talking. We do not stir up trouble in the workplace. We don't cause little, get involved with little cliques in in our workplaces. We we, We don't back news in the workplaces and stir up trouble. Not only are there certain things that we as Christians ought not do, but there are certain things that we as Christians ought not say. Look at Proverbs 4, verse 24. It says, put away perverse talk from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. This means we don't use metaphors. We, we don't try to clean up these words. We don't try to polish them up. We don't try to make them nice and shiny and somehow try to add some class to them and then use them as if they were all acceptable. We don't do that. We stay away from that. And, and we don't use acronyms, acronyms like OMG. We, we, we stay away from things like that. Euphemisms. You, uh, uh, A euphemism is an inoffensive word or phrase substituted for one considered offensive or upsetting. So we we don't try to polish it up. We, We don't try to make it look good. We just stay away from things like that. Because listen to this. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatever is true. Whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. These are the things we ought to have running around our brain. These are the things that we ought to be thinking about. If we want something to be on our mind, if we want something to dwell on, then dwell on such things, things like these, things that are notable, things that are lovely, things that are admirable. We are to think of these. Anything that's excellent, anything that's praiseworthy, think on these things. We we build up. We don't tear down. We, We We unite. We do not separate. We do not divide. So think about these things. And stay away from perverse talk. And while we are on the subject of perverse talk, 
I want to take the liberty to suggest that God is not, and I repeat, God is not the man upstairs. God is a holy God. God is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha, the Omega, who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David, the triumphant one, the rose of Sharon, the bright morning star. His name is a strong tower that the righteous run into and are saved. He is our buckler and our shield. The Lord is our salvation. Who shall we fear? The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed and a stronghold in times of trouble. He is our ever-present help. He is he who was dead and yet is alive. Behold, he is coming soon and his rewards are with him. God is not a man that he should lie. Our God is worthy to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. His name is not a byword to be used in a frivolous way. He, he, we are to honor him. He, we are to magnify him. His name is above all names. And at that name, the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. We are to honor Jesus. We're to honor God. We're to honor his Holy Spirit. Someone might ask, are you upset about something, Brother Kenny? Well, l let me take, take, um, imitate Jesus on this. When, when, when the Pharisees came to Jesus and tried to trip him up with a self-condemning um, question, he replied, I too will ask you a question. So I too will ask you a question. How would you feel if you were to go out amongst the people, and hear them talking about your mother or your wife and calling her all kind of low-down names. How would you feel? Well, that's exactly how I feel. And while we're on that subject, I, I want to ask you this. Has anybody saw that movie, Bruce Almighty? Well, I did not see Bruce Almighty, but someone told me about it. And I found it to be very offensive. I found it to be a shameful way that they mocked the holiness of our God with their paganistic rituals. How can we allow the heathens of the world to desecrate the name and character of our God? And then we support them in their effort by paying to go and watch that garbage at the movies. To bring the, the, the name and the character of God down to, to, to the low level of a mere man and use it as a byword is shameful. We as Christians do not support or participate in such things. We're to stay away from that. We're to strive for holiness. Oh, someone would say, oh, but it's only entertainment. It doesn't mean anything, Brother Kenny. Besides, it's all in jest. It's funny. Well, how funny would it be to have your own mother or your own wife lured to the level of a prostitute and have her name slandered? Would you find that funny? How much more than a holy and righteous God who said, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not Hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Yet you partake. If not you yourself, you let others partake. Which equates to the same thing. If we don't stand up against it, then we're for it. For when we say nothing, when we do nothing, then we accept what's going on. And while I'm on that subject, let me also want to add, let me add this as well. The kind of music that, that Christian parents buy for their children is appalling. The worship services under the guise of music concerts that they buy their children, the tickets that they buy their children to go is disgraceful. Just, just a few weeks ago, eight people died 
in one of those services. We are no longer to mimic the things of the world or to participate in the things of this world. We're to stay away from, we're to come out of them and be separate because we're to keep ourselves holy. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will in another place he says this therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them says the lord and touch no unclean thing then i will welcome you and i will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the lord almighty what am i talking about here i'm talking about being a christian living a life of holiness not making excuses about Jesus is the only one who is holy. Or Jesus is the only one who is good. No one is perfect except for Jesus. No, we don't make those kind of excuses. We strive for holiness. We might not achieve it, but it's not from the lack of trying. We ought not to accept anything less. We're to strive for holiness. We're trying to live a life of righteousness. Strive for perfection. Strive for holiness. And stop all the excuses. God said we are to be holy because he is holy. Some Christians might say, Oh, if only God, I, I knew God's will. If only God would answer me. I would suggest clean up your life. Get your house in order. Stop borrowing from the things of this world and receive from God. For God said that, that if we were to do these things, he would let us know what his good and perfect will is for our life. We're to look to God for our direction and not to horoscopes. This one here is for free. Contrary to popular belief, there are only two types of people in this world. There's the holy and the unholy. There's the saint and there's the sinner. There's the saved and there's the unsaved. There's the righteous and there's the unrighteous. We don't have to be dead for a minimum amount of years then have a panel of men analyze our life to see how many miracles we had done or how many, many visions we had seen. All we have to do is come broken or have a broken and contrite heart. Come in godly sorrow and say, Father, have mercy on me, a sinner, and please forgive me. Mean it, believe it, and you will have it. You will be given God's free gift of salvation. He's lavished salvation upon us. Lavished it. He spared no expense. He lavished sal salvation. So all we got to do is to come ask. He's not going to withhold it from you. He will give it to you. Gladly give it to you. Look at 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if your sins are forgiven, you are now cleansed. If you are cleansed, you are also free, which means you will be miraculously transformed into a saint. So live like it. We are to Live like we are forgiven. We are to live like we're cleansed. We are to live like we're free. Jesus said in, in John chapter three, uh, chapter 8, verse 36, If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. How do we know that we are free indeed? If God has forgiven you, you are no, and you no longer do the things that you used to do, or say the things that you used to say, 
You are no longer the same person. You are now in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You are now a new creature in Jesus Christ. You are a saint of God. We must become a new creation so that we might win others. If we are the same as the world, how can we witness to the world? If we accept and participate in the things of the world, how can we convince them that we have something better? If our light does not shine, how then will those in darkness be able to walk? How will they be how will they see to walk? If we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth, therefore, we are to take our election and our calling seriously. What am I talking about? I'm talking about striving for holiness, without which no man shall see God or no woman for that part. Jesus is coming back. For his bride. He's coming back for a bride that is washed white. A bride that's without spot. A bride that is without wrinkle. A blameless and holy bride. Paul wrote, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? I will tell you who bewitched you. The music industry has. The TV shows that you let into your home has. The cartoons that you let your children watch and learn from has. These are the same ones who have bewitched you. They have bewitched you. They have bewitched your family. They have bewitched your children. Then you wonder why your children are in church. You wonder why they have strayed so far away from the things of God. You have let them become bewitched by the things they watch on the TV. By these shows. You have let Disney raise your children instead of teaching them the things of God, the ways of God. Remember, this is the time that we get things right. We are here for just a little while. In eternity, it's forever. We are to prepare for eternity because one day we're going to spend eternity one place or the other place. Listen to me. We ought to have rules in our home. Our children are with us. They live under our roof. They're eating your food. They're sucking up your AC. You pay their bills. And you can't have and maintain standards. You can't have rules. You're afraid to hurt their self-esteem and because there, there's too many rules for them to follow. The Bible says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What I mean is this. We don't go into our children's room on Sunday morning and ask them, do you feel like going to church this morning, honey? Or if if you don't mind not playing that ungodly music, or would you please not watch that witchcraft show? It opens up spiritual doors in our home. No, I don't think so. I say, raise up a standard for God, and God will raise up a standard for you. And I'm not getting off my message here. I'm still talking about striving for holiness. You see, Proverbs 4 verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. This is suggesting that there are ways we count as acceptable. There's ways that we count as not really that important in the long run. You might even make the excuse, well, God understands. But that is just our carnal nature talking. Because God understands. Yes, he understands, all right. He understands that there's a way that seems right. But its end is death. These seem things that... We might not seem so important to us right now, or they might seem acceptable enough, but they're not what God, they, they, God, God expects. You, you, you would say, well, they, they don't seem too bad. But I'm telling you, these might very well be the same things that God says is important. 
They're totally unacceptable to me. So therefore, we ought to find out what seemeth right unto God, who will judge and reward accordingly. I want to close with this. I read a story about St. Patrick baptizing a Druid priest. See, both men were standing in the water, and St. Patrick had inadvertently placed his staff on a priest's foot. When the baptism was complete and the Druid priest wasn't moving, St. Patrick said, you can go now. The priest answered, I can't. To which St. Patrick responded, why not? Your staff is on my foot. An embarrassed St. Patrick said, oh, I'm so sorry. Why didn't you tell me? The priest answered, I thought it was part of the whole ceremony. It seemed to St. Patrick that he had done everything the right way. Even the Druid priest thought it was done all in the right way. St. Patrick had baptized him. And when he had analyzed everything, he found that his staff was on the man's foot. It was not all the right way. Also, the priest, it seems to be all the right way. And he would have followed that same procedure, even with the staff on, 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 the, bap, on the guy's foot that he was baptizing, because it seemed correct to him. Well, this story isn't of much consequences here in this life. But if we ignore the, the, the prompting of of our conscience by the Holy Spirit. Little things that might seem right or that we might overlook can be of dire consequences. It could cost you all eternity just because you were too lazy to find out, spiritually lazy to find out. You just went along. You didn't try to find out what seemeth right to God. That's why I always suggest at the end of my messages, buy a Bible, read the Bible. Do not depend on someone to tell you. Read the Bible. Highlight the Bible. Because there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Let me say this. If there's a way that seems right to a man, but if it offends God, what then? Because here's the thing. Look with me at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 25. It says this. If someone sins against a man, God will mediate for him. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can intercede for him? If we offend a man, God will intercede for us. But if we offend God, who can intervene on our behalf? Who can deliver out of his hand? Let me just be straight up and forward. Jesus is coming back real, real soon. And there's a way. And there's a right way. There's a wrong way to live. And I suggest to you that you find out what that right way is to live. I suggest to you, you find out what way seemeth right to God. So so that when Jesus comes back, he will find you doing what it is that you ought to be doing. He'll find you on that right way, the way that leads to life. Because if you're not, who can deliver out of his hand. So the question is, are you on the right path? Are you on the right way? Are you doing what you ought to be doing? Are you ready for Jesus' return? If not, you can be. All you have to do is ask. We read that just a little bit ago. All you got to do is ask. If you're ready to ask Jesus right now, I'll lead you in that prayer. All you got to do is to close your eyes, repeat the prayer after me, believe 
in your heart that Jesus has heard you. Believe in your heart that he has forgiven you. Accept that free gift. It's, it's all spiritual. Believe it. It's in faith. And you will have it. Pray this prayer with me. And believe with your heart. And confess with your mouth. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to walk in the paths of righteousness. Help me to find that way that, that seemeth right to you. Lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Cause me to lie down in green pastures besides still waters. Deliver me, Lord God, out of temptation. Deliver me, Lord, out of the hands of the evil one. Be with me that I might overcome. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I suggest that you do is to buy yourself a Bible. Highlight the Bible. Highlight those verses that's meaningful to you. Those promises, because Jesus will fulfill every promise he will make to you. He will fulfill it. He'll le not leave one unfulfilled. So believe it. Learn to pray. Pray in the morning and pray at night. Find yourself a Bible-believing church, not one of those progressive churches, but a Bible-believing churches who believe that there is a right way and a wrong way to live. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you're supposed to be doing. And he'll take you to be with him. That where he is, you'll be also. I want to say thank you so much for joining us week after week. I, I, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for, 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 for Jesus' faithfulness to us and to you. I want to say blessings to everyone who's listening. May the Lord bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace. May, may he answer all your prayers when you call upon his name. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.